what was that noise? <laughs> well, many fishermen are calling it sturgeon thunder because researchers are putting those sounds to a science. In just a couple of days, sturgeon spearing begins. A popular place will be Lake Winnebago and, of course, the upriver lakes. I think a sound was they were texting each other. Something like that. Something like that. But there is a new approach out there that hopes to shed some light, or in this case, some sound, on how the prehistoric creatures reproduce. Fox 11's Eric Peterson talked to fish biologists and the man behind all of this research. Oh, they're like three. The sounds of sturgeon spawning on many stretches of the Wolf River are familiar to many. But beneath all that splashing and thrashing, there may be more than meets the ear. The first time we heard it, it was, it was scary. Like the hair would go, go up on the side of your arms because you're like, Ooh, what is that? Audio research specialist Chris Bocast says that is the sound of a sturgeon. There is rapping and chirping, too. We brought these sounds to science and we're able to accurately analyze them. Bocast spent three seasons in the chilly waters of the Wolf and Embarrass Rivers recording the underwater sounds. The groundbreaking research was the foundation for his doctorate in the field. What we learned really surprised us. We found out that these sounds were infrasonic. In other words, they were below the level of human hearing. Bocast says he sifted through more than 40 hours of audio. The sounds work as a shock wave, basically boom, and that's it. So it's not like whales where they're bouncing really low frequency sounds off the seafloor and sending them for hundreds of miles. It's not one of those situations. They only go for a very short distance. Bocast says contours in the river bottom prevent low frequency sounds from traveling more than 15 feet. But high frequency sounds are more powerful. And you can hear the hydrodynamic sounds of the pods thrashing for at least 200 feet downstream. So the big question is why? The noises that we've documented are pretty much during spawning. DNR Fisheries Director Ron Brook took part in the research project. He says males and females make the sounds, likely through their swim bladders, perhaps trying to improve the chance of success. When these fish are migrating hundreds of miles up the river, and there's lots of different rock piles that they could spawn on, the males have to know where this female is going to be. So they, they listen for this action, and then they know that there's something taking place there that they want to participate in. And researchers say sturgeon use whiskers to help them hear. They're called barbels, and those are common in fish species that are electroreceptive. Biologists say knowing the sounds can help them manage the population. So you could put the hydrophone out, and if you hear the sound, you know you have spawning fish. Bocast says he's proud to be part of the project. Making an actual scientific discovery was, was really quite thrilling. Eric Peterson, Fox 11 News. Bocast says his research is far from finished, says he plans to be back on the river to record the sturgeon activity from above the surface. More about sturgeon sounds and the research project are available through a link on our website homepage.